relationship with my kid's father for 20 some years, how he had me in a car gun with a gun and had me handcuffed to the um, to the car so I wouldn't get out and handcuff me to the bed and just you know it was just very valid with me in front of my children and that's what I went through. Honestly, I'm gonna be selfless in this question, meaning that I did suffer domestic abuse from my husband, but the most memorable abuse I would say would be that would that was inflicted upon my oldest daughter at the hands of my ex-husband. He was a pastor at the time and I was a first lady and after years of being married, you know, you figure you know a person, especially if they hold the position of being a pastor, knowing that no one is perfect, but you put people at a certain responsibility, a certain level, um, and you believe that they have been delivered possibly from demons from the past. It had come to my attention that um, he had molested my oldest daughter. And even with the abuse that I was going through during our marriage, nothing could um, amount to the feeling um, that I felt when that had come to my attention. And I know that a lot of people feel, you know, if you haven't been in a domestic violent relationship or abused at the hands of your husband or a partner, God bless you. And some people try to judge and ask, you know, or say, you know, well, if it were me, I would have left, or why didn't you leave? But I believe that God uses, um, gives you means of escape. And for mm -hmm. that, when that happened, that was an eye-opener for me. And I realized that it was no longer my life, but it was my children's lives that were escaped. Us as African American women, we're, we're often taught to everybody got a story. Child, get over it. You know, keep it moving. You know, so we learn how to suppress things and not to talk about it, not to regurgitate it. You know, you cover that thing up, you pack it down, and you keep it moving. Because one thing a black woman ought to do is survive. I've been hearing that the rest of my all of my life. But if I were to, and it, you know, I, I find this very difficult. If I were to think about some instances that I've endured, you know, at the time that I was um, in it, and I was in it for nine years, you know, things like, you know, and I was in the church, you know, I don't know how other women endured it, but I was in church during um, this time period of my life, and you're taught the sanctified wife, sanctified husband. You know, you gotta fast, you fast enough. If you pray enough, if you cook his meals just right, if you give your body when he wants your body, keep him happy. Don't start nothing. You know, Psalms 37 and blah, 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 blah. You know, you know, the blah, blah, blah is not on the Bible, but just the things that people tell you. They throw out cliches and scriptures at you until, instead of letting you speak and really hearing what you're saying. I came from a home from of five kids. I'm the oldest. I can say that I was pretty much the bad one from all of them. My mama really had a hard time with me because I always believed that I wanted to do everything my way. And my struggle, my, that was pretty much the struggle that my mom had during that time. When I was 15, I met my ex-husband and I fell in love with him. It was just like that loving, loving, loving. When I turned 17, um, we got married. And after we got married, three, year, three months later, um, it was the first time that he um, abused. We got in a big fight, and it was the first time of the beginning of a long journey. And that was um, pretty much the years that I stayed with him, that it was 15 years, back to back, you know, going off and on, the church, the kids, and him, it was just a bottle during that period of time. As a child, I grew up in a foster home. My foster parents, um, Walter B. and Albie P. Swindell, took me in as, um, when I was born. Um, my mom was mentally ill, 
um, had a nervous breakdown over my father. So I, as a child, I had a really a very good upbringing with my foster parents until they passed away at the age of 10 and moved on to another foster home. So I was a child that was in the court system. My experience, it comes from a, very, a variety of different angles, um, not only of just being hit, but being raped, sexual assaulted, molested, and kidnapped. Um, I've been through a lot of things in life, but yet God has brought me to where I am today. Um, my first boyfriend, when I was 16 years old, we was out having some fun, and we went over to his house to take a break. And while his uncle stood there, he raped me. You know, and just the torment and the pain of what I've been through, you know, I just want to be a blessing to others to let them know. Cut. <laughs> it's time to talk about it, how we live it, so. Yeah. Uh, Transitions Family Violence Services, we are a shelter-based domestic violence agency where we serve victims of domestic violence. We shelter women and children who are victims of domestic violence and we provide services to the community for anyone who's, who needs our services. So if you have a male who is victim of domestic violence, um, they can use our services as well. Um, we provide support groups as well as um, counseling for children. A lot of times when children who Witness domestic violence in the home have a difficult time dealing with it because they don't always tell their parents how the witness made them feel. So the services are designed to kind of help them kind of work through what has happened to give them the opportunity to, to kind of work towards healthiness for themselves. We also provide, like I said, counseling for women as well who are victims. Um, because a lot of times women who are victims of domestic violence will keep it to themselves, don't tell them anyone what's going on sometimes or they feel isolated because of the cycle of domestic violence. So support groups are really designed to kind of help them, to work towards empowering them towards healthiness. Those are just kind of some of the services that we do here. I think it's from anger, maybe something they went through as a child. Because, um, you know, like I said, God was dating. He had told me that he saw his mother when his father killed his mother. He was just angry about it. And it's like every woman he dated, he abused and did the same exact thing. So I really do believe it can have something to do with, you know, the way you grow up and what goes on in your life. I have to agree with that. Because even with me knowing his mother and his father, they pretty much went through the same thing that he was taking me through. So I believe that it's what he saw coming up as a child, even as a young man, you know, how the abuse happened in his home. And I think that he felt that was, it was okay to bring it. You know, to my home, me and my children. Um, yes, I agree to that too because my kid's father saw his um, stepfather take his mama's eye and and he, I guess, when I met him, he thought that he could beat on me the same way. So yes, I agree to that. And also, was drugs involved with him? Yes.